When Igor Aliash goes out anywhere in Minsk, whether it's just to the shops or secretly meeting foreign journalists, he brings a jail bag. Since the summer last year, journalists like him have been detained nearly 500 times, covering protests against the rule of Alexander Lukashenko in Belarus. They've been grabbed off the streets while broadcasting live, bundled into police vans. Igor has been arrested in the past. He's expecting it to happen again, just like his wife, Katy Serena Andreeva. This, it turns out, is also a love story. Two young journalists who met covering the elections and demonstrations in Belarus back in 2015. A relationship forged in the profession. For Igor, a case of hold the front page. Я увидел безумно красивую девушку в красном пальто и понял, что ее нужно обязательно пригласить на чашечку кофе после акции. So, so your first date was at a protest then? Ваше первое свидание было после протеста. Да, тот факт, что мы вместе работаем, он укреплял наши отношения, потому что мы понимали, чем живет каждый из нас, что ощущает и о чем думает. Не было какой-то Katerina is a journalist with Belsat, a Polish-funded news service. She was live-streaming the police at a demonstration back in November when a drone clocked her on a balcony. Not long after that, the police arrived at the door. Просто теперь у двери квартиры, где мы находимся, позвонили. Мы не ведаем, кто это, але. The live stream was disrupted. Kat Serena and her colleague Daria Chilsova were eventually charged with organizing, quote, the disruption of civil order. In Western Europe, the debate around freedom of speech and the culture wars has reignited. But in a courtroom on the other side of Europe this week, journalists have ended up in cages. Literally. Katy Serena here in white, her husband Igor in the gallery, leaning in. Alexander Grigoryevich Lukashenko. State television news is often wall to wall Lukashenko in Belarus. After one of his news channels ignored the violent quell of demonstrations last year, a third of the staff left. Then along came COVID and a lack of proper reporting put pay to any trust the population had left in state-controlled journalism. It's just incredible to see how people actually support both bloggers and journalists. They come to their trials, they allowed us to, to their apartments when we were on the streets reporting in August, and we needed internet. Um, and they are basically now on the side of, of, uh, of journalists. Uh, I mean citizens. So the authorities clearly see this, and they um, have lost um, monopoly over people's minds. That's why they're so scared. At best, the journalists on trial today will be fined. At worst, they'll receive a maximum sentence of two to three years in prison. <laughs> Igor is not particularly comfortable with him and his wife becoming the news, but believes the attention will help her cause. So he remains poised during the interview, like his wife, the consummate professional. Just a little wobble, though, on this question. Igor, if she does spend a substantial amount of time in prison, how will, how will you cope? Uh, 
Это, безусловно, будет очень тяжелым ударом для меня, но я знаю, что рано или поздно у нас все равно все будет хорошо, мы победим и будем счастливы, потому что наша любовь гораздо сильнее режима Лукашенко, всех его тюрем и спецслужб. The Belarusian journalist Igor Ilyash.